What's up guys, welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 61, and for this episode we head out to Montreal, Canada. We play in our first international meetup game with Andrew. Uh, it's a 5-5 game with the YouTube viewers at the Playground Club in Montreal. It's a super cool episode, um, but before we get into it, I've got a few announcements to make. The first one is that Upswing has a huge deal going on right now. It's 25% uh, off all their products. And that only lasts until Friday, May 25th. So just a few more days to take advantage of that. Um, they have by far the best training site in terms of tournament material and cash game material that I've seen. I'm studying the tournament stuff right now. They have like a tournament masterclass. It's like a 30 hour course. So they go over all the pre-flop strategy and post-flop strategy, pretty much every situation uh, you can imagine that you'd find yourself in. They go through ICM stuff as well. Definitely worth it, especially if you're planning on playing a lot of tournaments during the World Series of Poker. And their cash game stuff is super good as well if uh, you want to purchase that. So I'll have links down below in the description box and I highly recommend that you check it out. Uh, the next announcement is that I'm going to Norway in a couple days. I'm in Northern California right now at my parents' place. Um, and I'm going to leave from here. I'm not quite sure when the next video is going to come out. Probably like a week or 10 days from now. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Hope you guys enjoy it. April 23rd, Monday, meetup game day. Um, I'm hanging out at the hotel, the Aloft here in Montreal. In a few hours, I'm going to the Playground Poker Club. I'm gonna see Andrew there and uh, we're gonna play some poker. But before I do that, I'm going to hang out with my buddy Fred. He's gonna show me around the city and we're gonna get some really good food. Once Fred and I arrive at the playground, we meet up with Andrew, and shortly after, one of our YouTube viewers, his name's Dave, gives us a Naughty Otter beer from Ontario, Canada. He's an extremely nice guy. It's about time to start playing now. We buy into the game for 1,000 Canadian, which is just over 800 US dollars. We get our chips, then take our seat. Right away, we get involved in some huge hands. Here we're dealt pocket kings in the cutoff. Our buddy Dave, who gave us the beers earlier, opens the middle position to 20. Folds to me, I put in a three bet to 65. Folds back to Dave, he makes the call, so we're heads up and the flop is 8-5 deuce with two diamonds. Dave now leads with nearly a pot sized bet of 130. I'm surprised by the play and I just flat so that I don't scare him off if I'm beating him. And if he's beating me, I don't put any more money into the pot. The turn is the nine of hearts. It's a card that shouldn't have changed much. This time, Dave slows down and checks. I figure he probably has a hand like queens, jacks, or tens, and maybe he has a flush draw. I bet 180, slightly less than half the pot. Dave thinks for a bit, then makes the call. Listen closely now, and you'll hear Dave check the river in the dark. The dealer puts out the jack of clubs, and the action's on me. I'm on the fence about whether or not to bet. It's an interesting spot for us. Of the hands that I put him on, I'm no longer beating jacks, and Miss Flush Draws can't call a bet unless he's holding something like Ace Jack of Diamonds. I'm beating Pocket Queens, which would almost definitely call a bet, and I could potentially get called by Pocket Tens if my opponent thinks I'm bluffing with some kind of Miss Flush Draw. Ultimately, checking back seems too weak. I put out a bet of 500. I'm nearly all in, and the opponent goes into the tank for a full minute. He's genuinely agonizing over the situation. No reason for him to do this unless he has a tough decision to make. If he has a set of jacks, I imagine he'd shove right away since I only have 125 left and I'd never fold. Feeling great about the situation. We have to be ahead here. Eventually, the opponent calls and uh, yeah, kings are no good. He turns over pocket jack, so he just checks the river in the dark and then drills it. 
Tough way to start out the session. I began questioning whether or not I should have bet that river. If the only two hands that we put our opponent on are pocket queens and pocket jacks, then I like the bet because it's twice as likely that the opponent is holding queens than he is holding jacks, given that one jack is already accounted for. There's six possible ways he could be holding pocket queens, and there's only three ways he can be holding pocket jacks. Also, there are some other hands that we're beating that could potentially call a bet. There shouldn't be any other hands that he has that are beating us the way the hand was played. It's just got coolered pretty hard. Kings versus Jacks. Jacks made a set on the river, so I'm rebuying now, headed to the cashier. I rebuy and bring bullet number two back to the table. We sit down and we're dealt ace king offsuit in middle position. Under the gun plus one limps in, I raise to 25. The hijack calls, the cutoff calls as well. The action is now on the button. He three bets to 125. Folds back to me. I don't like folding here, it just seems too weak. The opponent was set up perfectly to put on a squeeze play, plus I have blockers to aces and kings. I four bet to 450. Folds back to the button, and he five bet shoves. I call, he doesn't seem thrilled. I'm not too thrilled either, to be honest. The dealer puts out 10, 10, nine, and then a five on the turn, and we drill the river, it's an ace. So now I'm feeling pretty good, but the other player has ace king as well. We chop it up. That was kind of stressful, so I order a BLT to calm my nerves. Next, we're dealt 10 7 of clubs in the hijack. Dave opens a 20 from under the gun plus two. The player to his left calls. I have a hand that's generally not one you'd want to call a pre flop raise with, but I'm stuck, and Dave has a pile of money in front of him that I would like returned, so I call. The cutoff calls, the button calls, and so does the big blind. We go six ways to the flop. It's 10-8 deuce rainbow with one club. We've got top pair and some backdoor draws. Checks to me. There's at least some chance we have the best hand, and there are plenty of turn cards that could help us out. There's quite a few bad ones, too. I bet 55 so that we don't give anyone a free chance to take the lead from us. The cutoff calls, as does the big blind. The other players fold. There are three of us now, and the turn is the deuce of diamonds. The big blind checks. I'm concerned someone may have a better 10 than me, so I check to the cutoff. Cutoff checks back, which I'm happy about. It's possible we're up against two players with hands like Queen Jack, Jack 9, or 9 7. The river is the three of clubs. The big blind checks again. I probably have him beat. I check because the only hands that I'm beating that would have called my flop bet are missed draws, and they won't call a bet anyway. The cutoff could potentially bluff with those types of hands though. The cutoff fires 190. The big blind folds. I had nearly the best hand that I'd ever have playing this way. So I call, the opponent turns over queen 10 of hearts, and he wins it. That's what I get for tilt calling with a wider range preflop than I normally would. Next we're dealt ace jack offsuit in the hijack, under the gun plus one limps in, and I raise to 25. The cutoff calls, the button comes along, and the limper calls as well. So four of us see the flop, it's ace 10 seven rainbow, under the gun plus one checks, I bet 55. The cutoff folds, and the button calls, under the gun plus one folds, so now it's heads up. The turn is a jack, so we've made top two pair. A few straights get there, nothing to be too concerned about though. I bet 125. Now the button jams for 200 more. I'm not fist pump getting it in, but I'm never folding for 200 more. I call, the river is the deuce of clubs, I turn over ace jack. Top two is no good, we're up against a set of sevens. The hand pretty much played itself. I don't think there's too much I could have done differently. Sometimes you just lose. I reload for another thousand, and I become quite good friends at this point with the cashier. Getting smoked. Just got uh, my third buy-in of the day. Um, yeah, just running bad, playing bad. Not a good combo. Uh, let's see. People are laughing at me. Um, Going to try and hopefully get it back. Uh, the guy who got me earlier with the jacks, he, he got Fred as well. Uh, the guy who uh, has been taking me around all day. So the whole the whole carpool got wiped out early. Fred left. I'm gonna try and uh, I'm not even gonna try and book a win. I'm just gonna try and recoup some of my losses at this point. I only sit down for a second before Andrew and I decide to switch tables. Let's see if I can reverse the luck. In this one, we're dealt pocket sixes on the button. The hijack opens to 20. We've got a clear-cut call. The 
big blind now, three bets to 75. The hijack calls, we're getting over three to one and we're in position. We make the call, the three of us see the flop and it comes six, six deuce. So we flop quads in a three bet multi-way pot. The big blind leads for 175 and the hijack shoves. We're going to the moon, my friends, or at least we would be if that's what actually happened. Unfortunately, the real flop is 10-9-3 rainbow, super brick it. The big blind leads out for 175. The hijack folds, and so do we. Just wanted to keep you guys on your toes. We've got king four offsuit now in the cutoff. It's a bomb pot, so the eight of us who are at the table all put in 15 blind, and we go straight to the flop. Comes 9-5-4 rainbow. Player who would have been the big blind bets 25 into 120. It's a very small bet. Folds to me. I'm thinking maybe it's not such a bad idea to turn my bottom pair into a bluff. Win my first Canadian pot of the night. I raise to 110. Folds back to the better. He shoves it down my gullet for 214 total. Didn't know he was that short when I raised him. Can't really fold for 100 more just in case he has a straight draw or even one pair. I call. On the turn, we get extremely lucky, and we drill a third four. The river is a deuce, but uh, yeah, we're no good. The other player flopped a set of nines, and we were drawing almost dead. We're doing great so far. This hand will be more difficult to screw up. We have pocket aces under the gun and open to 20. Folds back to the big blind. He puts out a three bet to 55. Stuck tons of cash. Not sure with the conversion rate, but... Roughly a million US dollars. Really hoping to get some of it back. I four bet to 130. The bad news is that the player folds. The good news is that we win one. Next we're dealt ace queen offsuit under the gun plus two. Under the gun opens to 20. I three bet to 70. The player on my immediate left shoves her 550 total. Folds back to me as much as I'd like to call and give myself an opportunity to get less stuck. I let it go and the player shows pocket queens. Nothing about this night is going easy for me, so it's time to have a beverage. The local players tell me that I should have a drink called a Bloody Caesar, similar to a Bloody Mary, except they use Clamato juice rather than tomato juice. Clamato juice is clam spiked tomato juice. It was pretty interesting. Now we stop the entire meetup game for, that's right, a magic trick. Adam is one of the players in the game. He shows us a cool trick in which he's able to accurately find and pick out a card that one of the other players in the game chose from the deck without Adam knowing. You chose a card the first time to represent you, Chris. Originally from Brooklyn, now in Jersey. What card was that? The King of Diamonds. The King, the King of Diamonds? King of Diamonds. Okay, um, I, I've got to confess, I'm an amateur magician. I don't do this often, so I actually got it right. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I got the King of Clubs. I was going to say the King of Clubs. I have no idea how he did it, but if I was forced to throw something out there, I'd say there's roughly a 100% chance that Adam harnessed the powers of Satan. Anyway, I thought it was neat what he did. Thanks for doing that. My pleasure. Andrew was not as impressed. I don't know if it's going to make the vlog, but... Time to use some of the magic myself to hopefully win a hand. I'm dealt pocket nines on the button and open to 20. Small blind calls, we're heads up. The flop is jack 7-3 with two spades. Small blind checks. I put out a tiny bet of 15 to perhaps get some calls by worse hands. The opponent doesn't want to fold for that amount. He reluctantly calls. The turn is the four of clubs. Player checks, I fire again for 20. This time the small blind lets it go. Three and a half hours into it, we win our first pot outright, then went to a flop. We ran pretty cold there for a while. In the last hand we'll go over, we get a6 of diamonds in the hijack, and I open to 20. The cutoff calls, we're heads up, and the flop comes 6-6 six, six, deuce rainbow. This time, that's the real flop. We've got trips on a board that shouldn't connect well with our pre-flop range, so we don't want to slow play. I bet 20. The cutoff is a non-believer. He calls. The turn is a 9, this time I fire 55. The cutoff is still not convinced, he makes the call again, and the river is a 10. I bet fairly large, I've got an extremely strong hand, and it seems like the opponent thinks I'm bluffing, so I bet 160. The cutoff is deep in thought, but ultimately lets it go. We finally win a medium sized pot though. Now it's almost midnight, and time to cash out and head to the bar.
Got wrecked today, lost 15, 67. Ran bad in the beginning, played bad, lost hundreds and hundreds of dollars that I didn't have to lose. Uh, nothing really worked out in the beginning. Made a tiny comeback at the end and um, that's it. Not too much else to say. Despite not having the best session, I still had a great time. It was awesome to meet and hang out with the viewers who drove in from all over Canada to be there. This gentleman here came in last minute from Toronto and there were several people from Ontario and a few people who drove in from the Northeast United States. Our first international meetup game was a big success and we kept it going with our group until they turned the lights on and kicked us out at 3 a.m. That's it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Definitely helps. Um, if you have any questions or comments, then let me know in the comments section and I'll try and get back to you. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to everybody who showed up to the game in Montreal. That was awesome. Super fun. Uh, Andrew and I had a great time for the first international meetup game. Um, hopefully we'll be traveling around a little bit more to different cities. So let me know in the comment section uh, where you'd like us to go and uh, we'll try and make it out there. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to Fred Robert also. He gave me a tour of Montreal, took me to all the sites, took me to get some really good food. So I really appreciate that. Check out his YouTube channel. It's called Fred Ventures. Um, I'll have a link down below in the description box, but he, he plays poker and travels a lot. Pretty cool channel. Uh, the last thing is that you've got a few more days to take advantage of that 25% off discount from Upswing. Highly suggest doing that. I'll have links down below in the description box for the Tournament Masterclass and the Cash Game Poker Lab. Um, so yeah, definitely take advantage of it if you're, if you're looking to improve your game. Alright, hope you're all doing well. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.